Okay. No sound still? Do we got sound? Because I had sound last time. So it was something uh, something for you guys. Something between here and the interwebs, probably. But Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I, I just refreshed. Okay. Got sound this time. Right on. <laughs> you never know what StreamYard's going to throw at you any given morning. So, uh, good morning, Brother Keith and Brother Rich. Good morning. Good morning. How are you this morning? Fibbit a bit. Hope everything's doing well over there, man. Good to see you. Sound back right on. So we are five by five on sound, and you know, you got to look at this ugly face every every time you tune in. So uh, if you're not here for that, what the hell are you here for? <laughs> but uh, <laughs> happy Easter to you, brother Keith. Happy Easter to anybody who celebrates it. And if you're celebrating anything else, uh, happy that to you as well. But uh, yes, happy Easter to those who are celebrating today. It is a rainy day here in Michigan, so uh, if you're getting out with the grandkids, Keith, uh, you know, put them in their snow suits for, for while they're doing Easter egg hunting or something. You got you some Tims today, Rich? Right on, man. Yeah, so far, as far as decaf goes, uh, Tims is, my, uh, Tim's is my, my favorite so far, which is, it's an ankle deep high water mark, but uh, it's something. I've got a bag of Duncan that was on sale this week so uh duncan will be the next one i uh i try after the mccafe is gone i don't really care a whole lot for the mccafe should have sent the whole bag to uncle cow he seems to like it um but yeah what's up brother karsten happy easter to you brother glad you got friday off so you got your long weekend over there but yeah, we have, uh, we're double fisting it today. So two, two, two cups in one. Uh, no, um, let me make sure I got these right. The new cup is the Teddy Roosevelt. And the old cup is the, uh, lots of beans, uh, all the lots of beans. Uh. Hey, hey, stuff we do. How are you, man? Hope everything is doing well for you in South Africa. Great to see you, brother. Happy Easter to you as well. Happy Easter to everybody who celebrates it. But yeah, the two we are tasting today, the Halls of Lots of Bina, Beanza, and the Teddy Roosevelt, both from Black Rifle Coffee Company, both the first beans I've tried from them, thanks to Brother Terry. So, uh, we're going to get into those. We're going to wait till we're like in normal, normal starting time plus a few minutes so that the, everybody who's regularly here can get in here and uh, maybe see brother Terry show up there in the, in the chat. But, uh, now that we have sound back and, uh, everything's hitting on all cylinders. Good morning, everybody. <clears throat> so you may not have heard me say good morning to you. <laughs> When I first came in, but uh, good morning, Marco, and Broke As Knives, and Kathleen Smith, and Be Shady, Space Ghost. I think I'd picked up by the time Space Ghost. You were the one who told me no sound. So, but good morning. Good morning to everybody. And if you didn't hear me say hello, I probably still did, but hello to you as well. At Thursday and Friday off, did one of those rapid detox cleanse. The, oh. No, no. Sorry to hear you had to put up with that on your time off, Keith. It's so rare you get time off, brother. Well, there's Uncle Cal. Good morning, brother Josh. Good to see you. I drank a ton and then your blood pressure went nuts. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, the double caffeinated stuff, that's... Like I said, I don't drink coffee for the caffeine. It's a happy, happy accident that it uh, sometimes... Uh, Perks me up a bit. Usually messes with my stomach more than anybody. Good morning, Aaron. How are you this morning, brother? There we go. But yeah, so uh, made two cups exactly the same. Used their recipe uh, 
to the greatest extent I could. In fact, let me grab one of those cards so we can kind of go through the recipe. So, even though I don't have a guest on, I don't know why I feel like I need to put these earphones in, but here we go. So, their recipe... Their recipe uses water way hotter than mine, so we'll talk about some of that and why I don't use water as hot as they uh, they recommend on here, but we kind of stuck to this recipe. I did 205 instead of 206 because that's a setting on my uh, kettle, and I maintained the 17 to 1 ratio, but my uh, my grinder doesn't hold 30 grams of coffee, so we went down to 25. And then uh, tried to do the 17 to 1 ratio, uh, tried to maintain that, and um, uh, the AeroPress doesn't hold that much water. So I don't know who the hell did their uh, did their recipes, uh, but I tried to make up for it by putting it in the cup uh, so we get up to, we got up around 400, basically, instead of the 510 that they were recommending. But 400 grams of 205 degree water, um, 200 grams of that, <clears throat> 200 milliliters, I guess, in the AeroPress itself and the rest in the cup. So that was kind of the recipe for these. And uh, so, you know, going in, we'll see what it does. But. Uh, oh, yeah. Well, good. I mean, at least it got you an excuse to take the time off. But uh, if you had to take it off anyway. Cool. What's up, Dang? Can't okay, give you the mud butt. <laughs> yeah, too much of it will get me that. Otherwise, it just kind of kind of bothers me, and it it throws uh, the bathroom schedule off, and uh, that uh, that's never good for me. So, what's up this morning, brother Don? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> you out there in the wild streets of Omaha, brother? What you working on today? You still on uh, Cheetos uh, Proto? Or uh, you back to back to working on them folders? But uh, if y'all haven't seen it, uh, stop by Instagram and see Blessed Knives. He's working on something for Cheeto. And... Uh, Who's the other channel you're doing something for? Is it Knives to Meet You? Uh, there's another channel. Shit. <laughs> you're extremely loose with your coffee prep. <laughs> What's up, BNA? <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I, I was like overly anal about it when I uh, first started AeroPress. I figured out really quick that you don't have to be quite that picky about things. But uh, <clears throat> you, uh, you, you really, uh, you can't get too fast and loose with it or you end up with a cup that it's just not what you were aiming for on the uh, AeroPress. But uh, thank you, Kathleen. Same to you. Uh, my day is, uh, probably going to be go out and get some fresh air, walk around a bit. Cause I didn't get any sleep last night. Um, the roommates, kids are, they just didn't sleep at all. So, uh, uh, I tried to lay down about three and, uh, was about to doze off when they started bouncing off the, off the ceiling again. Well, their floor, my ceiling. So. Uh, yeah, they didn't go to sleep or they didn't quiet down until they heard, uh, my roommates coming out and coming downstairs. So, uh, they're sleeping now and it's, it's taking everything, uh, I have to not just bang on the walls and slam doors and go bang pots and pans in the, in the hallway, uh, going upstairs. But, uh, <laughs> so it's probably going to be fresh air. Um, I tried to record some content. Friday. I got Motivational Monday recorded Friday. I need to edit that. I thought I was going to get that edited yesterday, but ended up doing a lot of running. Um, and then, uh, so hopefully get that edited today and then hopefully sneak out into the woods with uh, 
with a few folders so I can get uh, Brother Bobo's, get the piece done on Brother Bobo's uh, Raptor, Brian Bound Raptor that he loaned me. So, what's up, Bushcrafter Booted? Good morning, brother. And Chef Rocky, good morning, man. How is you, sucker? Surface grind, Cheetos, knife. What's the point? That's it. Thank you. Little folder work as well. Right on, man. Good, good deal. Did some grading on students working with my wife. Cooked delicious lunch. And, and now it's Grumpy's time. Right on, man. I love having you here, Karsten. I think I said good morning, BNA, but if I didn't, good morning, brother. Blasting some sweet bagged by there is no such thing. That is an oxymoron. <laughs> Bagpipes and music are kind of oxymoronic. Uh, bagpipes are the only instrument in the world that I don't care how well you play them. Uh, something about the sound of them makes me violent. Um, being in the medieval reenactment thing, I used to be in the SCA. Uh, there are frequently people playing bagpipes at events, and I, I like my friends just form circle around me and to try and keep me from going over and running them through. I really, really hate the sound of bagpipes. They, they just cut through my brain and hurt. But, uh, I'm for, for once I am glad I don't live anywhere near you being. <laughs> now there are, there are some people out there who are really good at the bagpipes that I can, I can tolerate, but, uh, the the people who came by to wake ever wake the entire camp up first thing in the morning with Scotland the Brave. Um every bagpipe player knows Scotland the Brave. It's the one you learn first. You'd know it as soon as you heard it if you don't know what song I'm playing. Think of the only song that you you hear in every movie on bagpipes, and that is Scotland the Brave. So <laughs> less than ideal. That's putting it very nicely, but <laughs> that's putting it very, very nicely for me anyway. Um, yeah, I, uh, like I said, I am not a fan, but uh, let's uh, let's get into tasting some of these. Yeah, we're uh, 15 minutes in, which means we should be about 10 minutes past our normal time, eh, about eight. But um, let me see if I got these right again. The lots of beans. Oh, I'm going to get this all screwed up now. It's been too long since I brewed them. I think the lots of bean in some dude's cup and the Teddy Roosevelt in the uh, in the newer logo mug. Uh, this one smells amazing. Oh, there's a note in there I was not expecting from the smell. Boom. Let's stop and talk about this one right quick. Um, now, we brewed these at 205 degrees, which is a temperature. I brew 20 degrees below that. So uh, I normally brew at 185. And you get a lot of the, the, the reason I brew at that temperature is because through an aero press, you get a lot of the, the chocolate and the toasted nut flavors and stuff like that. And if there's any, uh, uh, you know, origin characteristics that are kind of brighter, um, you know, the the kind of uh, fruity and citrus and stuff like that, that all comes on the front end. So if you if you use too hot a water when you when you brew coffee, you lose those notes. So I'm getting a lot of the back end notes off this. Um, and one of them. One of them is pretzel. <laughs> I don't know that I've ever got a like a pretzel note from coffee. I'm interesting. Morning, Will. What's going on, brother? There's more than one song. <laughs> you wouldn't know it by uh by people who play bagpipes. Some people, not all people. I shouldn't characterize all of them. There's there's one dude who uh, 
he was amazing. I mean, you'd start hearing like theme songs from modern TV and say, hey, what's going on, Chris? How are you and Telly doing, man? Good to see you. And Will be, I think I said hello. And Mike Kreischer and Pizza Operator. Happy Easter to everybody coming in. Good to meet you. Good to meet you. Good to see you again, I should say, meet you. Oh, man. I think I said hello, dang, if I didn't. Good morning, brother. Low temp and bring the water to boil, then kill the flame and let it sit for a few moments. Yeah. Yeah, I, uh, I just keep my my uh, my fancy-ass e-kettles turned to 185. So... <laughs> <I'm> wondering. <laughs> I don't know either. Like I said, I, uh, I packed it in bubble wrap. I put it in there. Um... Unless I pulled it back out for some reason, and I haven't found this sitting around here. I did all the packing right right over here in front of the TV. So, uh, yeah, I, but it was, I hated that thing, Josh. Um, hey, I, you keep asking me to send you stuff that frustrates me, and I'm worried it's going to frustrate you even more than it does me. But uh, I'll let you keep trying them. Uh, I'll keep sending them to you, brother. But uh, sorry, that one didn't make it all the way there. But uh, here next week, I'm I'm expecting a little windfall, and I'm going to get some stuff sent out, and I will uh, I will hopefully be able to uh, get you. Uh, I'll just send you an AeroPress so you can ex you can experience that. And then if you don't like it, we'll maybe we'll give it away. We'll do a giveaway uh, some Sunday morning and uh, give it away to somebody else uh, in here who might enjoy it or something, brother. But. Uh, I'd love for you to give one a try and see what you see what you think of it. Listening, cooking, can't type. Be up, <laughs> brother Mimo. What you cooking, brother? If you get a chance to type it uh, when you get back. But uh, if you do an Easter breakfast with the fam, have a great breakfast, brother. And uh, thanks for coming coming to hang out with us, man. Poop Doozle. Good morning, brother. Same to you, man. If you celebrate, happy Easter. <laughs> 185 freedom units is 85 degrees Celsius. Yeah, sorry I don't uh sorry I don't uh auto uh auto translate uh Fahrenheit to Celsius. Uh, I I generally just cut it in half <laughs> to give me an idea, but uh but yeah, there you go. Uh, thank you. You can try anything. <laughs> well, I want to. I want to encourage you just to to have a better cup of coffee. Um, uh, enjoy your coffee more is really what it what it boils down to. Celebrating your birthday early, right on. Happy birthday, Fook Doozle. Your wife and son are cooking a big brunch for you right now. Good deal, man. Um, I hope you enjoy that. That sounds awesome. Cooking hummingbird juice. Making some syrup. Yeah, I was part of that generation that that, uh, that grew up. We started to learn it, and then uh, everybody decided to, to backpedal, and we got rid of it. And uh, now, uh, now we just look like. We don't. Uh, we don't really. Uh, we don't really care what the rest of the world thinks. We're going to keep using our archaic system of of measurements. So the temperature one isn't the worst. The distance ones bother me the most. But uh, but anyway, um, yeah, I'm going to be. I'm. I think I like this one a lot done at a proper recipe at a at a proper temperature at a normal extraction ratio and because my extraction ratio is more like 11 to 1 and then i top up with a little bit of hot water but not bad i'm gonna be uh i'll be interested to see what that one does and let me see see if i got this right That was the Teddy Roosevelt, I believe. And this is the Latabina.
Well, that one just did smell straight up savory. I don't know what the hell's going on with this one. You're supposed to enjoy coffee, right? Some people don't. Some people just drink it because they've been drinking it forever. <laughs> oh, you got a mayhem fook dizzle? Yeah, I've got one over here. I opened up uh, the Thursday before last from uh, Brother Forrest. Yeah, yeah, it's a fidgety beast, though, isn't it, man? Da, 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 da. Sound like somebody racking, uh, racking the slide on a shotgun or a machine gun in the other room. But uh, hey, Carco, what's shaking, brother? Good to see you, man. I had to learn the con the conversion because of machining, but tip messes with. Oh, okay. You had to learn the uh, the millimeter, the met the metric millimeter conversions and stuff. That's where it's really handy, especially in machining. Instead of talking thousandths of an inch or whatever, you're talking, you know, fractional millimeters and stuff. Has anybody tried the new CJRB Prado? I have seen uh, I've seen somebody mention that they got, got it in hand and uh, it had some issues, if I remember. But uh, I have not personally got one in hand yet. Uh, it's one that's on the list of things to take a look at. Uh, but as a folder, who knows? <laughs> who knows if I'll uh, if I'll get it in uh, before Blade or not. It may be one of those I just check out walking from table to table of Blade. Don't drink coffee at all. Left that, yeah. I left sodas way behind. Sugar has made its way into my diet uh, in the past month or two in a big way. Uh, all these donuts, <laughs> all these donuts and shit, um, just really uh, does not, uh, I love donuts, I love sweets, but uh, right on, brother, you got a carbide platen for the grinder already, man, right on. Well, enjoy that, enjoy your time out in the garage, brother Keith. And uh, uh, keep your fingers safe, brother. But uh, uh, thanks for being here, my friend. And uh, enjoy your Easter if you get to spend time with the family, brother. 25.44. Yep. And uh, <laughs> they are fire. And uh, somebody over on Instagram from uh, who's a local uh, told me that Hinkley's downtown is even better. So uh, we're going to have to try them out <laughs> as well. But uh, but yeah, Meckley's is amazing. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to cut it out before I get to that point. <laughs> I, I don't want it to have to be. You have to quit. But uh, well, Lone Wolf, what's up, brother? Happy Easter to yourself. Hope you're doing well, my friend. Hopefully you're doing better, I should say. Well is a relative term. Hopefully you're doing better than the last time I talked to you, my friend. <laughs> you have a great one, Michael. I'll talk to you soon. Thanks for coming by, my friend, and enjoy your Easter with family. And if you go to Barn, enjoy that too, if you didn't get that out of the way yesterday, so you could enjoy today. But... Let's try this uh, lots of beans. -a. So the sniff, uh, the sniff tells me it's a lot more savory than I care for. Hinkley's are great too, but their hours are weird. They're cash only and always slammed, so I'd never go there. Okay. But one of the roommates is, uh, is working downtown now. So uh, hopefully they're going to slide home with a couple. It's four in the afternoon and you're craving donuts and coffee. <laughs> Sorry about that, brother. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, good morning, Sister Dawn. Ever since being here, I've needed more caffeine. Well, I mean, that is horrible, but it's an excuse to drink more coffee. Uh, so hopefully you'll at least enjoy that. Wow. Uh. But I hope you're doing well this morning, Sister Dawn. So, uh, I'm, 
putting this one off a little bit. Not going to lie. Oh, yeah. That's, uh, that's a lot of weird. Um, it's got a light roast note to it that I don't like. I thought that would have burned off in a 205 degree water. Um, yeah, I can't even, I can't even identify what that note is. There's an overriding, not quite bitterness. It's a note in the coffee, but, uh, it's a very savory kind of vegetal note that, uh, that's going to be a hard cup to get down. What's up, Brian? Man, Black Sparrow. Good morning. It's Easter, so you took your your Grail, which is the ZT0999. I'm not familiar with that model. ZT0999. Okay. I don't, I don't, oh, I do remember that, yeah, I remember that top, uh, the way that top, uh, that little bar on the top works, I remember that now, floating bridge, they call it, okay, who designed this one, is it an in-house design, huh, this is a different looking knife, some of ZT stuff is so, uh, if y'all, let me, I'll present it so y'all know what we're talking about. If you don't know the ZT0999, this is it. So, uh, yeah, that's very cool. Glad you got the, uh. Well, good morning, Black Sparrow. I said hello, but I didn't uh, didn't read. Uh, Let me say, Legion is Grugs in here? Grugs up in here? If I missed him, if I said if, if Grugs is in here and I missed you, hey, brother Grugs. Uh but uh, good to see you, Black Sparrow. Welcome. That's not the one. <laughs> Oh, that's zero nine. Ah, uh, I hit the wrong, wrong button. Zero nine nine nine. There we go. Sorry about that. I did not pay attention. It still has the bridge, though. Yeah, here we go. Let's uh, restream. Add that too. There we go. So that's the zero nine nine nine. Yeah, if anybody is looking for a um Numazon or a Mordax. Uh, Brother Lone Wolf has two Mordaxes and a CRKT Um Numazon uh, for really reasonable prices and look brand new. So uh, take a look. Uh, if you want to see pictures, we can jump over to uh, Instagram and show you pictures. But there is uh, the ZT0999. And uh, let's pull this down for now. Jump back over here. And go to Insta. So y'all can see what it is. Brother Lone Wolf is, uh, is moving. Wow. We got pictures in here. Surely we got pictures. Where the pictures? We got no pictures up here, Lone Wolf. I'm not seeing any pictures. Of, oh. Oh. Missing. Bop, bop, bop. Your boy is broke. Yeah, I uh, I would pick up uh, Mordax. 
if I had the money right now, um, mainly because just to help Lone Wolf out, but it's one that eventually I'll put in the put in the collection anyway. But uh, but yeah, if you're looking for uh, Mordax or a new Numazon, you didn't post pics. I, was, I was say I saw them in the. Uh, I think maybe I saw them in the in the story then. I thought I'd seen pictures of him. But Bobo, what's shaking, brother? Good morning. Hopefully you're doing well down there. Um, but yeah, if you're looking for Mordax or a Num Numazon, get a hold of uh, Brother Lone Wolf over on Instagram. Right on, Fook Doozle. Happy birthday again, brother. Happy early birthday. And... Uh, uh enjoy your brunch with family brother uh very very cool so uh uh hopefully everybody if you're celebrating easter day you have a good time but you have an extra good time due to birthday stuff brother well uh, good morning nikki good to see you hopefully you and i are doing well up there man oh so uh Yeah, we will. Uh, we'll talk about how these do next week, as far as my regular recipe. But right now, I'm not liking that lots of beans at all. Oh man! Oh, you have the frame lock. Right on. I've never never handled the frame lock version. Second cup achieved. There's Al. Good morning. <laughs> oh well, good to see you brother al and sister nikki wonderful to see you both this morning hopefully everything's going well up in your part of canada we got uh, uh mimo in here so we've got uh have a have a nice canadian contingent in here this morning wonderful to see y'all hopefully you're uh Having a good Easter morning if you celebrate it. Otherwise, you're just having a hopefully having a good Sunday morning. Oh, they're not the button locks. Okay. Graham Ford stamped on the backside and their frame locks. Okay. There you go. Good morning, Brian. And spring has actually arrived. Right on. Well, there you go. So these are not button lock Mordaxes. They are frame lock Mordaxes. Good to know. Cooking turkey. Right on. You, on the grill or in the oven or some other means. Easter turkey. Yeah, the, uh, <clears throat> the local Meyer had hams on sale for 79 cents a pound. So I, uh, I bought a big ass ham the other day and threw it in the freezer. Oh, they are button locks. Okay. You're confusing me. Confusing me, brother. So they are button locks, Mordaxes. The coffee hasn't hit yet. So there we go. In the oven. Woo woo. So yeah, if you're looking for Mordax, these are not the frame lock version. They are the button lock version. Well, hello, Doris the Cat. Good to see you. How you doing this morning? Happy Easter if you're celebrating it. <laughs> no problem, brother. I just didn't want to uh, give people the wrong information, have somebody buy something and it not be the, the thing they thought they were buying. But uh, <clears throat> but uh, hopefully you move at least a couple of those soon, brother. I would have thought... Uh, would have thought somebody would have jumped on a Mordax at least by now. But yeah, um, neither one of these two beans are exactly my cup of tea, which I guess it's coffee, so why would it be a cup of tea? But uh, I think the Teddy Roosevelt is the, the one that uh, more appeals to me and that I think is going to come out the other side of my recipe tasting more like my normal cup of coffee. 
Oh, nice. Very nice. Will be wants to know which version they are. Uh, Brother Lone Wolf. Are they, do they have like version one, version two, all of that on Protec Mordaxes? I can. Or the Fair and Forge Mordax. The, the Protec. They're the Protec version. Yeah, that's right. No sleep makes me even worse than normal, guys. My freaking brain is uh, not following anything today. I kind of want to go over there and mix some. Uh, some big bang in with that Teddy roast about and see what kind of cup that produces. But uh, that's what's going to happen in the next week or so while I'm trying to figure out how these things will play into my normal. Uh... Oh, I know uh, one of them is blue, but I, that I, I can't tell you the other details. Uh, I think I just shut it too. I meant to. Uh... Ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba. Go over and see uh, if Lone Wolf, Lone Wolf had mentioned maybe uh, putting up some pictures of them. But uh, or just sending them to me. Ba, ba, ba. Nope, something from Dan, something from Brother Josh. But who would suggest that I'm talking? <laughs> oh well. Uh, 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 there we go. Anyway, posted two pics. Okay, let me jump back over there. Hit the refresh. There we go. Come back over here. Share me a screen. But I know. Here we go. So yeah, you have the blue one and an all blacked out version. Uh, both of them are the drop version of the Protec. 20 CV blade, button lock. Man, I like that blue one. But there you are. If you're looking for a 20 CV Protec uh, Malibu in the drop point, these are drop both drop points, right? Are these, damn it, I know I saw them. But uh, they're both drop points, aren't they, Lone Wolf? They're not uh, Warren Cliff or Sheep's Foot. I'm... I'm about ninety percent sure that they were both uh, they were both drop points when I saw the the photos <clears throat> earlier in the week. Okay, yeah, there we got confirmation. Thanks, brother. So yeah, there you go. If you uh, if you're looking for a murdered out or a, a blue and a blasted Mordax, I definitely get a hold of brother Lone Wolf. Oh, that's right. The Mordax. I'm thinking the uh, Malibu. God damn it. You're good. Yeah, I don't know why. I just lumped them all into the same, 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 uh, same design. What's up, Brother Gons? Um, I do know, but uh, brain not working at all. Uh, <clears throat> but no, uh, yeah, definitely um, Mordax, not Malibu. There you go. <laughs> Mordax, if you're looking for Mordax, get an older brother. Or an Umnumazon. Um, really nice looking Umnumazon that, that is absolutely looks brand new. Uh, so uh, if you can help a brother out and get yourself a nice knife in the process, there you go. Yeah. yeah, it seems like everybody in the community has a Mordax or a, either a Mordax or a Malibu, one or the other, uh, except in me and uh, 
like I said, the Mordax is the one I think I want more. So I go back and forth on it, but I really, I really do need to get a Protec button lock into the into the uh, collection at some point. Brother Gaunt, good morning, brother. Great to see you. Oh, you put up blade picks. Left it up this time. <laughs> There we go. Jump back over here. Add it back. What the hell? Stamped it on the back side. The FF design. There we go. Like I said, if you got any more questions... Don't hesitate to get a hold of Lone Wolf. He is a super nice guy. Uh, super duper nice guy. And uh, 100% will vouch for Lone Wolf, man. Uh, great dude. So uh, if you buy something from Lone Wolf Buying Confidence, you will get your stuff. Malibu's too small. I think they're... They both felt okay in my hands when I handled them at late a couple years ago, but uh, I definitely preferred the Mordax. But, uh, man, the good cup is almost gone. Ah, so today for the uh, tasting of the two Black Rifle Coffee Company beans, the Teddy Roosevelt definitely wins. Uh, pow. Um, yeah, the the halls of lots of beans. Uh, I gotta figure out what's going on with that bean, and uh, if it won't uh, if it won't blend with the uh, the Big Bang or uh, kind of come into conformity when I use the right. Uh, right temperature water um it'll probably get punted onto somebody who enjoys light light roast beans it's designed you know, so we've got the fair and forge design nine times out of ten oh the Mal oh that's right the malibu is a fair and forge too is it <laughs> Uh, see, I, I'm just not keeping anything straight today. Brother Tim. Good morning, brother. Happy Easter to you too, my friend. Hopefully you're doing well down there. Your eyes doing better, brother. Much love to you and uh, Mrs. Bama Ninja. Hopefully y'all are enjoying your Easter. But yeah, um... If you like a light roast, you might uh, you might enjoy that halls of lots of beans, uh, but it's got something going on that I don't really enjoy. So, um, like I said, we're gonna mess with both of these beans in the next week, and we'll come out uh, we'll come out the other end on next next Sunday and talk about what, if anything, I managed to get done with them at uh, a different temperature at my normal temperature, and trying to find a regular recipe for these. Well, dopey. What's shaking, brother? Happy Sweet Jesus Day. <laughs> right on. Congratulations, Dan. Happy Easter to you, too, brother. And I uh, hope you enjoyed the show, man. That's cool. Um, yeah, it looked like there was a lot of, a lot of, that's, that looks like it would be a really fun show. Uh, even though I would not necessarily enjoy, uh, the foray into the city and, uh, you know, heading, heading over into Jersey to go to the show. But, uh, um, look, the, just the exhibitors and the stuff that are at that show really looks like it would be a, a good one to go to if you are in that area. Good morning, Joseph. How are you this morning? Happy Easter to you. But, uh, but yeah. Uh, the the New York Custom Knife Show, 
uh, looks like a good time. So, um, I have there for a while. I thought we were going to be outside this morning. I almost set it up to be outside uh, Friday, and then decided to watch the watch the weather. And the weather guessers were uh, calculating rain probably later today, but it rained off and on all day yesterday. So uh, a little soggy out there. So I opted for inside this week. First three and a half hours of the trip is a breeze. Last half hour is not my thing in the city. Yeah. Yeah. Just too many people. <laughs> like I don't, I don't mind going into the city to get something and run out, but to go into a city and, and plan on spending the day there, it's got to be something really special. So, <laughs> the Jersey speed bumps like Fast and Furious. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, Shady, take care, brother. Um, uh, and thanks for the for the good wishes for a weekend, brother. There you go. If you want a Marauder H, um, check out Blade Bench. Lone Wolf's got one up there. So, <clears throat> like I said, uh, this is one of those instances where you can uh, help a good friend in the community out by uh, buying yourself a grail. <laughs> so if you're uh, if you're looking for uh, um Numazon, a Marauder H or a Mordax, definitely uh, get a hold of Lone Wolf, man. But yeah, we are uh, uh, man, and I've still got all the, the Mexico beans over there, so these may get mixed in with those or with some uh, Big Bang, but uh, neither one of the beans from Black Rifle are out of the bag at the at the recipe on the cards. Are Neither one is, like, spot on in my bean and roast profile, but uh, the uh, Teddy Roosevelt is definitely my favorite of the two, so... Thanks again to Brother Terry for uh, passing off a couple bags of Black Rifle coffee for me to for me to try out, along with the uh, what did I do with her? Put it back in here. Nope, it's over there. Along with where did I put it? It's on the table somewhere. Did I put it over here? But along with the Spidey Chef. Thank you, Brother Terry. I was kind of hoping he'd wander in here at some point this morning, but uh, he's probably on the road driving. And if you are and you happen to be uh, listening in, Brother Terry, uh, much love and thank you again um, for the coffee, for the Spidey Chef, for taking time out of your schedule to hang out with me and uh, just occasionally give me, uh, give me a heads up you're going to be in town so we can, uh, we can stop and throw around some knives on a tailgate or something, brother. Appreciate you very, very much. <clears throat> Yeah, yeah, there is. Uh... <clears throat> oh, right on, right on, Shady. <laughs> Ooh, the fifth mash. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> yeah, I need to. Uh, I need to get a hold of uh, Lefty and see if he's still got a a lush left for me. Um. I asked him if he'd put one back until after the first of the year when I got a little bit of money. So now that I may have a little bit of money, I'm going to see if uh, I'm going to try and make good on that if he's still got one. So, uh, but uh, enjoy that. Enjoy installing those skiffs, Shady. Uh, I still I still need to get a set and uh, put into something, and I've got a couple knives I think they would be uh, they'd be perfect for. So. If I do ever get a set, uh, get some skiffs, you will see a video on it because uh, that could be uh, just like your ex. <laughs> um, I love the smell of coffee, the taste of coffee, the everything about coffee. But uh, but yeah, coffee and uh, even when I was a kid, coffee and uh, pipe tobacco. Love the smell of both of those things. Long before I liked the taste of coffee. 
Um, I, I I love the smell of it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Lone Wolf's got some got some crazy knives, y'all. Um, so if you uh, if you're looking for a great deal from uh, somebody that's well known in the community and uh, somebody who takes care of their stuff, uh, definitely. Lone Wolf is one worth dealing with. Definitely one lo worth looking at as far as what he might have for sale because he has a crazy, crazy collection. So, <laughs> a dark mode mash and a lush. Right on. If you hug Gigi, you. Yeah, kind of like a sniffer valve. <laughs> What's up, Brother Scott? <laughs> Good morning, man. Uh, yeah, you squeeze me too hard, you, you'll smell coffee. You're just kind of oozing out of someplace. Yeah, Kev is, that's why I try and tell people. A lot of people don't like like Lefty because he can be a bit bougie. A bit of that's an act. <laughs> But uh, Kev is a hell of a good dude who helps a lot of people. Um, he is uh, he is a really, really awesome person. So uh, he's done a lot for this channel. He's done a lot for a lot of channels. So, uh, yeah, I got nothing but love for Kev. So my, my cousin from Boston. <laughs> Baston. Reminds me of grandfather that passed away when you were a kid. Yeah. I just like, like when I was a kid, I would go to the mall and I would walk through the mall and you'd walk past, uh, down in Indy, we had a, a chain pipe tobacco, uh, just tobacco store called uh, the Pipe Puffer. And they had them in malls. <laughs> so you would literally walk through the mall and you would smell the pipe tobacco. And uh, I was, I smoked a pipe for years and years. Uh, until I gave up nicotine altogether. And then I, I still have a few pipes and a pipe, uh, you know, my pipe stand, but uh, don't really, don't really, I, I haven't smoked a pipe or any type of nicotine containing anything for a uh, long time. So. <laughs> uh uh, <laughs> I am a hugger, though. If you meet me at Blade, it's no problem. Just walk up and, and give me a hug. I was scout carrying that day. <laughs> GG chases the dragon. Yeah, I'm all about that uh, that brown stuff. <laughs> no. <laughs> What's up, Nameless EDC? Welcome. Good to see you. Welcome, welcome one and all happy easter to you if you celebrate and uh i don't know if i've met i've seen you here at the at the circus before but uh if this is your first time welcome and uh if it's not welcome back paladin black cherry i uh i literally went to the the pipe puffer and uh had custom blends made from the, the time i was a teenager and started smoking a pipe I always had a custom blend. Right on. Well, welcome. It's great to have you here. So this is our Sunday live, and you're getting in kind of towards the end of it. But uh, Sundays are all about coffee. So uh, um, we'll talk mostly about coffee, a little bit about knives. So uh, um, Sundays are more about coffee than about knives and gear. And then Thursday nights are more about knives and gear and less about coffee. But uh, we talk about everything all the time. So just to give you a little bit of a heads up on what's going on. Beans are welcome to Beans and Blades. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like a good pint, but I'm not going to ruin it with tobacco. <laughs> well, Kyle, what's up, weirdo? Good to see you, brother. Yep. 
yeah, Captain Black, I think, is where everybody starts. Um, happy to have you here, too. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, Captain Black, because you could get it at every store anywhere uh, back when we were kids. Now it's hard to find pipe tobacco unless you go to a tobacco store. And fortunately, those are everywhere. Coffee and cutters. <laughs> um, sipping and shanks. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, uh, this morning we, uh, since you're just getting here, uh, we had, we took a look at two new beans because they both came from the same company. This is my first experience with Black Rifle Coffee Company. So we got a couple beans uh, in from Terry T-Rex Express, a good friend of the channel, and uh, got to hang out with him, and uh, he handed off a couple bags of beans for me to try, so I could try the Java Jabby. <laughs> um, but... Uh, he ended those off so we could try out the, the brand as well as two different types of medium roast beans from them. And then uh, head to head, the, uh, what is it? The uh, Teddy Roastevelt <laughs> wins in this one. So uh, I, uh, I, thanks again, Brother Terry, for the experience of both the coffee and the knife. Um, I'm enjoying the, the spidey chef quite a bit it's been in my pocket pretty much all week uh swapping out other carries with to go with it but uh what am i going to carry today uh, i just kind of told you uh the spidey chef i may throw the uh i carry the uh the original stripe so the kaiser original and the carbon fiber it's a two ounce knife so it is absolutely uh easy to throw in sweatpants or even if you're not wearing pants it's easy to carry so uh it'll probably be the spidey chef the original stripe and uh in all honesty it'll probably be the naked cardinal for mary's edc around my neck so um one or the other uh will always be on me either the original stripe or the neck knife and then uh, if I actually go out, I'll grab the full set and throw the Spidey Chef in my pocket, too. The tactical sauce. <laughs> oh, the, the beans. Okay. Tactical Sasquatch uh, from Black Rifle. It was great. Right on. Uh, if you want to try these two beans, let me know, brother. I can pull you a bag of each out so you can try uh Carry a knife? That's when the neck knife comes in handy. Or a two-ounce knife, you can just kind of toss in your boxers and go. Grunt grounds. <laughs> um, I would actually love to do that eventually. Um, there is uh, only one local roaster that I found here, the Jackson Coffee Company. And I finally ran in, found their location downtown last week, and uh, walked in. Very cool little place. They have uh, a roaster right inside the door. One of the the big roasters that uh, you know has the big round thing that spins the beans. And that, uh, so you walk in the door and you just get hit in the face with the smell of coffee, the way it should uh, should be. But. Uh, Oh, they, oh, hey, fuck that. Fuck that thing. Um, there you go. If anybody's looking for an anthem, I wouldn't sell it for cheap either, brother. Uh, crack is the sheep to get creative. <laughs> Good morning, Mimo. Glad you're done with your breakfast prep, brother. Um, wonder what you're having. What you're making for the family, brother. But yeah, um, the uh, Jackson Coffee Company. But one of these days, I will find uh, a small roaster who would work with me on doing exactly that. 
uh, I would love to be able to ship out, uh, ship out, uh, you know, uh, uh, a knife made by a, a small custom knife maker and a bag of custom roasted beans to you guys. And, uh, you know, there you go. We're good. Glad you get to see Mama Cow again. Creative with duct tape. <laughs> no. Curry, now you're talking, Mimo. Hell yeah. Right on, brother. I would say enjoy that, but there, I, in my personal opinion, there's no way that you can not enjoy curry. Uh, even curry that's way too hot is good curry. <laughs> Small. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, man, Easter curry sounds like a thing that should always happen, man. I love curry. Uh, it's about time to make some more green curry, but uh, we'll see. I would normally be cooking today is uh, kind of one of my Sunday things, but I just don't feel like cooking. It's probably going to be a lot of sleeping and uh, maybe trying to screw with the kids upstairs so they don't sleep all day and maybe they'll sleep tonight so I can get some sleep too. But uh but yeah, I don't want to be that get off my lawn there on spring break. I want them to have fun. I just need some sleep every few nights. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, that's uh, that's probably the carry today. Will be the um, I don't see my I don't see. Oh, I do. There it is. I'm gonna jump over here and grab the rest of my carry. It's out of reach. Oh. <laughs> it was in my pocket. That's why I couldn't find it. <laughs> yeah, the Spidey Chef was already in pocket. The Kaiser Original Stripe is just stupid easy and fidgety. And then, of course, the Aries EDC. Naked Cardinal, just a great little neck knife. Uh, great little neck knife from Scott. It's kind of taken over where the Essie Azula used to, used to hang. So, <laughs> that's just how big it is. <laughs> Tape up, not down. <laughs> oh. They woke you up to tell you about the Easter baskets that you bought for. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, thank you, Sister Dawn. I don't know why I didn't, <laughs> didn't post that link when I was over there looking for it and looking at them. Thank you. Yeah, I knew you got that ABW. 84 Remington bullet knife. Pow. So traditional and the super modern. Very cool. Wow. But yeah, um, this is one basically. Uh, well, if you saw my Instagram <laughs> post, post Friday. It was going to be a forest, fr forest Friday with my Mallory Forest. If you didn't see Thursday Night's Live, uh, Dylan Mallory just kind of wandered into the chat and hung out with us there at the end, uh, which is really cool. Uh, I had no clue he was going to be stopping by, but uh, Dylan, one of my favorite designers and the designer of my favorite non-production, non-standard production knife, the Mallory Forest. But, uh, uh, yeah, so Dylan stopped by, uh, and I just showed off my Forest. 
or talked about it, but uh, stopped by and hung out with us for a while. So Friday, I was gonna, already going to be a Forest Friday, but I had that. I had the uh, Shaman with the Lava, Mar, uh, not Lava Flow, Mars Valley Carbon Fiber Scales. The Spidey Chef. Oh, and the Brown Brown Raptor, because I was out recording that, and I took and taken the other ones out with me as comparison knives. So uh, that was my carry for Friday. I didn't carry a fixed blade. I carried four my four the four nicest fixed blades I have in, except for my grunt. I didn't take it out Friday because I carry it almost every day. So <laughs> only eight <nine. laughs> And one of them's probably the sheepdog in your fifth pocket, isn't it? But, uh, <laughs> yeah, if you don't know, that's about a half of Dopey's normal carry. He usually has about 15 knives on him, and that's not an exaggeration. <laughs> oh, one of the, uh, one of the best, uh, videos that came out of last year's blade was uh brother vu um vu pocket check dopey at blade and dopey was just it just kept coming yeah dylan is a super approachable guy loves to talk to people about knives just a super Super, uh, super nice guy, man. And uh, just humble and down to earth. I love talking with Dylan. Uh, every chance I get at Blade, I end up talking with him two, three times as much as he has time to, uh, when I pass his table, uh, I'll always stop and say hi, you know, see how he and his dad are doing. <laughs> the all Zerk. <laughs> Put your two pounds shaman in your fifth pocket. <laughs> you got an orange yoko coming? Right on. Delivery carries all the knives, not just for show. Yeah. With a hairy with a heavy carry. Well, you britches, you got you gotta start wearing suspenders because you're carrying so much stuff. You you might be carrying too many knives. But you do you. I don't have to carry them. That's all that matters. Um, that's kind of why I kind of uh, settled on three knives was sort of uh, that's where it came down to any much more than that. And my pants are, I'm constantly pulling my pants up. So, oh, yeah, yeah. He, he carries that all the time and he uses most of them too. So, Yeah, Will B and uh, Todd Carr and David Iverson all have similar carries. Um, the three of you tend to carry more than the average person. Um, Dopey is the only one that I've seen that, that, that nobody carries like Dopey. Seriously. There, that there is no joke that he will pull 15, 15 knives out of his out of various pockets on him. Yeah. Um, <laughs> any given day. I mean, like you said, today's a light day with eight. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I'll usually carry three, sometimes four. Knives, pocket junk, and Hank. Usually for me, it's just knives and pocket junk. Occasionally a Hank in the back pocket or something, especially if I'm carrying an extra folder. I'll have one in the Hank to kind of keep it from uh, you know, beating each other up in my pocket. Are we wearing two pants? <laughs> uh, um, but yeah, uh, see, now I've got the Spidey Chef. I need to get a cuff in too. Let me talk to Ma. 
I need to talk to Leong Ma about getting in one of the EFDs anyway. I know how much I love the uh, God, it starts with a T. That other, that giant ass with the Trinity. Is that, damn it. But anyway, I love that knife. And if it were just a hair smaller, I would probably carry it even more. But uh, the Eutectic Trinity is a great outdoors knife for me. It would be nice, but I can't do a boot knife with flip offs. <laughs> The knifeless. Hey, Papa, what's shaking, brother? Good to see you, man. Good morning to you and Mama. Hey, Grumpy's Blade Butter. How you doing, man? Great to see you too, brother. Wonderful to see you. I actually have out my blade butter and uh, three or four knives over there. I'm going to be. That's one of the thing. Uh, one of the things I'm going to be doing today. Uh, I can make S35VN rust pretty regularly so uh i have a couple s35 vns and some uh some carbon steel this was actually sitting over there my uh my cardinal is getting a little bit uh, right where the sheath touches it I apparently had a little bit of moisture on there so it started to uh patina a little bit and i don't necessarily want that <clears throat> Tired after yesterday's trek. So you didn't see any, but you, uh, you've you heard reports of some starting to pop, brother? I'll say I need to go out and walk the ditches around here, see if any of those uh, south basin slopes on the ditches out front are uh, starting to pop at all. And an Arius in your basketball shorts. <laughs> The, the JWK, I, I would have no problem with, but uh, that area is going to drag your shorts down. Tactical garters. You rarely carry more than one? Well, wow, Brother Byron, good morning, man. You, you and the grumpy chalice made it home okay? Right on. I'm glad y'all made it home. Ah, thank you. Yeah, I love the Spidey Chef. I have, uh, I waited a long time. I, like I, I, I've told you all the story. I, I was waiting to find a user when I had money and stuff like that um, to buy one. Little Bro Jack and Premium Pony. Fidget Boy Slider and 52 Ways Hank. Right on. Not a leather knife bandolier. I, uh. I actually have thought about going out to uh, Goodwill and finding an old denim jacket or vest and uh, having a friend basically sew a bandolier inside each side so I can basically slide a bunch of knives in at an angle down and uh, so they won't work their way out, hopefully. And uh, and then I can just wear a denim vest around. <laughs> What's up, Brother Nick? Good morning, my friend. Happy Easter to you if you're celebrating. Need to go check your woods. See how many trees are down. If it got some wind. Um, I've been keeping an eye on my woods. I put I put camera back out. And I'm just not getting. Uh, not getting anything on them. But man the deers are beating up my trees. Trying to shake their uh, antlers off. So they can shed. But uh I'm not finding any sheds, and I'm not getting them on my cameras for some reason. So, little grays are starting to come come in. Not many. It's a reason to get deep in the woods, and that's all you need. Right on. Hey, Blade Walker. Good morning, friend. Sabenza and a cheap Civivi or a parrot. Right on. They say there's a ah. People don't know what they're talking about then. Uh, there's always um, multiple flushes of morels, and they tend to come. There's only two true colors of, uh, there's two clades is what they call them. There's yellow and there's black. Um, and it all, it's not actually the color of the, 
the top of the morel. It's how the the top attaches to the the stem. So uh, you almost certainly have in in Kentucky and West Virginia area. You almost certainly have both clades down there. There are plenty of Canadian tucks available. <laughs> oh, check for morels. Right on. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, if it's not been moist late, uh, like you've not been getting rain all the time like we do up here, then yeah, after rain may be the time to go. Um, around here, it's actually probably going to be on a sunny day, as wet as it always is. Uh as soon as we get a couple more 70 degree days, they're probably going to pop all over the place. Had a forging vest in a recent video. <laughs> Dave, Dave has all kinds of stuff. Dave has the ability to have people make stuff for him. So, um, he could, yeah, why not? Uh, it usually tends to be small grays and blacks uh, pop earlier, earliest in my experience. Um, you get the, the little grays that just look like a, like the tip of your finger on the top of a tiny little, tiny little stem. Um, the black ones are the hardest for me to find. But because uh, um, the, just the top of their cap. It tends to be almost all caps. So you have this huge cap and this really short little stem. And all you see is like the top half of a black morel sticking up. So until your brain gets used to that, that image imprint, uh, they're hard to find. <laughs> Boys. What's going on, brother? How you been? Uh, no worries. Glad to hear you're busy. Hopefully this is busy doing something fun. Uh, if you want to forage for the special variety, go to, uh, go out to a cow pasture. Just, just walk through a cow pasture first thing in the morning down there, brother. You'll probably find some. Yeah. 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 That's exactly it right there, man. A little bit of rain and you know, you get that, that, uh, those days where the high exceeds 70 and your lows don't get much below 50 and that ground temperature, that soil temperature will start to rise. That's when they'll flush. Now the, the, the pecker heads or uh, spike mushrooms. Um, those are actually uh, one of the few that fall outside of, the the black or the yellow clade as far as morcella species go i think they are still morcella they may have reclassified them but uh yeah the spikes or pecker heads or whatever a lot of a lot of things people have called them over the years but uh um sometimes they'll flush before uh the yellows and browns um sometimes they flush with them sometimes they'll flush with the blacks and grays uh they're the, the the spikes are really hard for me to pin down when they're going to come up and where they'll necessarily come up. Um, if you find the woods where they're in, they'll almost always be there, but they won't necessarily flush in the same way that the regular morels flush. Um, so that's, that's the experience I've had with them anyway. <clears throat> Your lilacs already trying to bloom? Or the leaves are starting to 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 bust out. I say my lilacs out there start the leaves are starting to bust, but it's not even anywhere close to thinking about blooming. Um, if your lilacs are already starting to bloom, you could very easily have mushrooms out there. <laughs> sure, let's say they were calling you a mushroom. Yeah, you get into the the big national national forest lands and stuff like that um or state forest lands you can get into especially here in michigan and wisconsin the upper midwest you get those huge i mean huge yellow mushrooms yellow morels um 
yeah, my grand my grandparents used to drive up to Michigan, used to follow the mushrooms up to Michigan and come back with a truckload from what I've been told. <laughs> Lovely vocabulary. <laughs> <laughs> Let me jump over there, Sister Dawn. Ba da ba ba da ba. Oh, just send it to me or something? I'm not seeing it, Sister Dawn. I am not seeing your uh, your lilac bush. Yep. Yeah, I've heard the same thing. Oh, I thought you said you'd already posted. <laughs> uh, um, but yeah, uh, if it's just getting little green, you know, little little bursts of little green along the branch, then then that's just your leaves starting to leaf out. <laughs> no jokes. <laughs> Oh, but yeah, uh, my lilacs here are I've got a couple of uh, old French lilacs out in the, along the drive that uh, they're starting to leaf out as well. I'm keeping an eye on those oaks since that's what Papa uses for his uh, indicator. Wait till those oak leaves get as the size of uh, mouse ears and then. Uh, but uh, the big thing for me is uh, keeping an eye on the uh, roadside ditches because those face south. And uh, that's also where a little cluster of wild asparagus grows is uh, out on one corner of the property along the road. So I will be out there uh, harvesting some wild asparagus. I got a bunch of store-bought asparagus in the, in the refrigerator I need to cook local uh local grocery store had asparagus for 99 cents a pound so i loaded up <clears throat> send away kyle uh <laughs> oh man right on brother don yeah i'm gonna be taking off here in a second too we're all waiting to check out uh, Sister Dawn's bush. <laughs> you too, Don. Have a great one, brother. I look forward to seeing what you're working on today, man. Have a great Easter if you're celebrating. Otherwise, uh, enjoy your day in the shop, man. <laughs> Moisture is the key for a blooming bush. Keep it moist. It'll bloom more reliably <laughs> but oh coffee completely gone now do 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 but welcome back home uh brother byron glad uh Glad you and Mrs. Kennedy made it back home safe and uh, looked like you had a lot of fun. So you go out in the garden and spit on just... <laughs> <coughs> Whatever it takes, buddy. <laughs> and off the rails, of course. Always, always, always. I would have it no other way. The circus train should never be on the rails. Uh, <laughs> the May apples, yeah, at least starting to come up. 
I don't, I don't know if we've got May apples here. I can't remember if I saw any last year or not. I think I saw a few, but not a whole lot. Um, may have to move some May apples and trilliums up here. And if I can find them, uh, some ramps. I think ramps would dig the, the uh, sandy soil up here. But, uh, but yeah, I've, uh, I need to get out in the, the more wooded parts of the property and uh, see what's going on out there. That may be what I do later on today. Brother Jake, what is going on over there, my friend? How are you? How are you and the kids and everybody doing? We are getting ready to uh, to shut her down. Just waiting to check out Sister Dawn's uh, lilac bush. <laughs> I don't know where in the world she had to wander off to. <laughs> yeah, I've got the uh, I've got the wild garlic up in the yard. I saw that coming up. I'm actually going to go uh, go harvest some. Use for chai. Use in place of chives. May as well. Uh, usually not. If uh, usually they, they, you'll notice a difference right out of the box, Mimo. From everything I've heard, I've never never messed with skiffs yet. <laughs> she's work. She's working on a good angle. <laughs> right on, Jake. That is great to hear, brother. Um, sorry we didn't get to catch up with you at Spirit of the Blade or anything like that, man. I uh, hopefully catch up with you again soon, man. Be nice to see you again. Got vacation piled up for just when they start flushing. Right on. <laughs> Someone probably had to fluff the bush before the filming begins. <laughs> Oh. oh man. <laughs> she, she, she running around, she running around in the in her granny jammies. She has to post it on only plants first. <laughs> Photos are in. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, that was the wrong way. There we go. Oh, nope, those are blooms. You are absolutely correct. <laughs> yeah, let's get over here. Show you all the difference between flower buds and leaf buds. Uh, these that look like grapes are absolutely flower buds. And yeah, your leaves are already out. So if you can already see full-size leaves, you, you are definitely... Okay. Now... I will say this. Um, this looks like they may not be French lilacs. You could be dealing with a Korean lilac. Um, is it a dwarf? Are they expected to say stay under like four or five feet tall? If so, they could be Korean lilacs and they may bloom a little bit earlier. Yeah, they they look kind of a dark purple, maybe brown, um, but yeah, those are those are definitely your flowers. Hey, brother John, what's shaking, man? They're young. Okay, well, if it's uh, if it's French lilacs, that's it's blooming early. So, uh, um, I would have I thought you I thought you were in roughly like maybe a. 5a something like that down there because indy's 5b and then up here is 6a i think um <clears throat> so yours they're just blooming exceptionally early <laughs> well there's a there's a type of korean lilac called uh miss kim it's a dwarf lilac that a lot of people a lot of designers and horticulturalists and everybody they they like to they they're very prevalent in in nurseries. So uh um you will see them you will see them all over the fucking place um uh, as dwarf Korean lilac. So um 
they bloom at a different time. I can't remember if it's earlier or later, but uh, they bloom at a slightly different time than regular lil- the French lilacs. And uh, I've never seen a full-size Korean lilac, so I don't know if it's a hybrid or something or if it's a completely different type of lilac. But I've... I actually saw snakes here walking around in the park, just garter snakes. But, but if uh, if snakes are out, you know ticks are out. So um, definitely treat your shit. Six A. Oh, you let the let the rat snakes and the black snakes go. They uh good morning, grumpy and the Koreans. God damn it. What's up, Cheeto? <laughs> the bless just left. Uh I see him working on your uh on your your prototype. <laughs> yeah, I uh, I worry a little bit about Massasauga rattlers up here, um, just because we have so many places that I need to clear out where it's just perfect habitat for them. So, <laughs> Korean dwarf with a lilac bush and rattlers. <laughs> Oh, they're going after the birds you're trying to incubate. I see. Right on. Yeah, then definitely you got to deal with those. <laughs> yeah, down in Indiana, we had uh, we had all the stuff. You go to southern Indiana, there's copperheads and uh, water moccasins and timber rattlers. <laughs> there's all of them. And then northern Indiana, they just have Massasauga rattlesnakes. Same as we have here. So I'll deal with just the one. And I've never seen a Massasauga before. Some friends uh, down in southern Indiana had some friends go camping. uh, And they had to call the ranger twice in one weekend to come pull a huge uh, timber rattlesnake out of camp. (laughs) So disease and salty Uh, morning, brother Josh. Happy Easter, Brand. <laughs> Y'all need help. Y'all need some serious help. But, uh, but yeah, um, I used to forage in some perfect, perfect habitat for, uh, copperheads and rattlesnakes. So never saw one there. Thank you, sister Donna. I appreciate that. But yeah, we, uh. We uh, definitely uh, have not seen much here. What I keep finding around doing my steps and everything is, I don't know if it's cats leaving them or what. I know we have three or four uh, feral cats that run around the property. I've caught them on camera, even though I can't catch a freaking deer lately to save my life. But uh, I'll find a dead vole. Laying in the, laying in the, at least once a week, I find a dead vole laying in the middle of a, a trail. So I don't know if the, the cats are catching them and just leaving, leaving them there or what. But, uh, um, yeah, I, uh, oh, I guess I could take down the Sister Dawn's bush. <laughs> oh, uh, I I used to to raise snakes and lizards, so most of them don't bother me. I just uh, don't want to get down like in the foundation area where the the previous families had just used as a dump, dumping down into the foundations. So there's piles of plywood and stuff down there, and uh, I'm like, I want to pull all this stuff out, but I know there's going to be all kinds of shit living in there, 
And so I like to I burn it in place and uh, just wait to beat things to death when they come running out of there on fire or what. But uh, that's kind of where I'm at. Uh, is there a designated community therapist who does that for work? <laughs> uh, <laughs> probably already monetized. <laughs> Yeah, you can only show Bush for about five seconds, and then uh, you get demonetized. <laughs> Your feet is spicy. <laughs> Burning Bush, where's the redhead? Uh, but yeah, uh, so, uh, you know, I, I don't want to damage the foundations, but I also don't want to go in and start pulling out ancient sheets of uh, plywood that have, I know, at least squirrels living under them. Because I will chase those SOBs into that debris pile. And they just go underneath. These, these squirrels tunnel, man. They are tunneling. Tunneling squirrels. They're not ground squirrels. They're not chipmunks or anything. But these little assholes have tunnels. <clears throat> Got many reports of mountain lions in the area. And a new threat to watch for when foraging. Which one chasing hikers in the Kansas River? Oh, yeah, that will make it for fun. <laughs> Never killed a mountain lion, but I choked a cougar once. <laughs> Mole squirrels, that's pretty much it. Uh, they learn some shit. Speaking of a thing, were you grasped by a squirrel as a young man? No. Nope, they've just uh, tormented me out in the woods my entire life. Consensually. <laughs> They're the little red bastards, so I will never know what they taste like, but I will shoot one at every possible chance I get. These little a-holes, man. I, I, setting up today, I looked out the window, and I see one go up my tire and into the engine compartment of my truck. So who knows what the little assholes are doing inside the engine compartment. <clears throat> yeah, bushy-tailed tree rats. That's what I call squirrels. Um, a passed out person tells no tale. <laughs> squirrels, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, to give you an idea how bad it's gotten around here, they're still in the ceilings. On occasion, um, not as often as they used to be, but uh, obviously more of them need to die. So uh, we got another, we got another pellet gun. Um, I got one of the old Daisy what, 880 or something like that, the pump, BB gun and pellet gun. So, uh, so yeah, we can tag team these little babies and uh, it's really going to uh, chewing the cover off my wires. They better not be. I swear to effing God, this, uh, <laughs> I will go full scorched earth on this property. There will be no trees standing within a hundred yards of this house and anything that moves within a hundred yards will get its, get its tiny brains plucked out of its skull. <laughs> North Korean tunneling squirrels. Damn it. <laughs> Oh, I have channeled Carl from Caddyshack my entire life. It's why I went to work on golf courses when I was a teenager. Um, I love that movie. But, ah, yeah, that's another thing that needs to get done is the new, the new BB gun needs to get sighted in and zeroed and everything. So maybe that happens this week. But uh, I need to finish getting the old one zeroed because it's only... It's glass only, so the uh, the daisy is iron sights, or it came with a scope that'll probably never go on it. <laughs> Gunga, galunga, gunga, gunga, galunga, which means on your deathbed, I will receive total consciousness. So I got that going for me, which is nice. And I used to know that entire movie by heart. Um, Especially all of Carl's, 
all of Carl's lines. So I used to be a pro, a looper, you know, a jock. So I was a pro jock over in Tibet. And who do you think they gave me? The Dalai Lama himself. Twelfth son of the Lama, flowing robes, a vision, the Lama. So he hauls off and he hits one, a big hitter, the Lama. So he hits one right at the base of this 12,000 foot glacier. And he looks at me and he says, Gunga Galunga, Gunga Gunga Galunga, which means on your deathbed, you'll receive total consciousness. So I got that going for me, which is nice. Possibly visit, but the FSC pollen pellet draining brains give me pause. FSE. What's FSC policy? Pellet, pellet draining brains. I'm not getting anything in that second half, and not enough sleep to to understand what's what's going on there, Byron. Full scorch. Okay. Pellet draining brains. Give me. Switched to red hot suet, and the squirrels won't go near them. Sadly, three woodpeckers that have don't either. We just put out some new suet cakes for the birds, and they're not touching any of them. Yeah, my no sleep, but my brain is worse than normal today, guys. So, uh, yeah, trying to parse full sentences right now is is getting harder. But, uh, but yeah. Um, yeah, the little the little red bastards, they're they're not much bigger than than uh chipmunks. They uh they're just as hard to hit. But we're uh we are down about eight, I think. Um down about eight of them and a couple of fox squirrels, so I'll take it. Uh <laughs> Sister Dawn battling a snake. You've seen her bush. Now watch her battle a snake. Uh, in normal speed? Yeah, of course. <laughs> Master Bridge is so ungrateful. You want to see some great, great bird photos, especially raptors, man. Go over and see uh, Gone Awry on Instagram. That's Space Ghost's uh, photo photography account. Hit them with the riddles, guys. Yeah. Do not hit me with that. <laughs> I will not be parsing uh, parsing jokes very well. But, uh... <clears throat> <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, we are, like I said, we're going to go out and wander around the property today. Should have taken the hat and the glasses off, but get on the neck knife. We'll throw that uh, original strap in my pocket. Uh, Go out and whip some squirrel ass. <laughs> Me too. But yeah, uh, yeah, Space Ghost and Gone Awry are the same people. Uh, Space Ghost is just his EDC account. And Gone Awry, he uh, turned into strictly the uh, the bird photos and stuff, which are really amazing. As somebody who tries to get some bird photos out here, I don't have the lens for it, uh, let alone the patience. But I'm going to stop shaking this freaking camera around and uh, uh, go clean up everything from this morning's coffee and uh, burn off some of the, the extra caffeine and uh, get some steps in. <laughs> One man-sized squirrel or ten squirrel-sized men fight. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go out and get some steps in and maybe uh, maybe I'll take that daisy with me and uh, have a little talk with a couple of these red squirrels. But uh, thank you guys for hanging out with me again on another Sunday. I appreciate you being here. 
Have a great Easter if uh, you're celebrating. Otherwise, enjoy your Sunday. Chasing tail with that damn rabbit was quick. <laughs> I enjoyed hanging out with you too, Sister Dawn, and everybody else. So thank you for being here and uh, hanging out for another Sunday. Next Sunday, we will uh, talk about whether or not I got uh, either of these beans dialed in as far as my recipe and my tastes and what I had to do to get it there from the recipe that's on the card. But uh, other than that, we are good to go for this week. So until I see you again, and I do hope I see you again, stay well, be kind, do good. That's it. This is Grumpy. Happy Easter. <laughs>